It was a dark and stormy night when I first encountered the house on Willow Street. The rain poured relentlessly from the heavens, drenching me to the bone as I stood there, shivering and staring at the old, decrepit mansion. I had always been fascinated by abandoned houses, and this one had an air of mystery that drew me in like a moth to a flame. I had heard the rumors about Willow Street. People said it was cursed, that anyone who dared to enter the house never came out the same. Some claimed they had seen strange lights flickering in the windows late at night, while others swore they had heard eerie whispers carried by the wind. But I was a skeptic, and I believed that there had to be a logical explanation for everything. My name is Alex, and I was a freelance writer always on the lookout for a good story. I had heard about Willow Street from an old-timer at the local diner, who claimed to have seen the ghost of a woman in a white gown wandering the grounds. It was the perfect opportunity to prove that there was no such thing as ghosts, and I was eager to debunk the legends surrounding the house. As I approached the front door, I could feel the weight of the rain-soaked clothes clinging to my body. The rain was relentless, pounding on the roof and windows of the mansion like a drumbeat from another world. I took a deep breath and pushed open the creaking door, which protested loudly as it swung inward. The interior of the house was as eerie as its exterior. Dusty old furniture covered with tattered sheets lined the hallway, and the air was thick with the scent of decay. It was clear that no one had lived here in years. I pulled out my flashlight and began to explore, determined to unravel the mysteries of Willow Street. As I moved deeper into the house, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every creak of the floorboards and rustle of the wind seemed to echo with a sinister presence. But I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me. There had to be a rational explanation for everything. I entered what appeared to be the living room and my flashlight illuminated an old cracked portrait hanging on the wall. It was a painting of a woman in a white gown, her eyes seeming to follow me as I moved around the room. I couldn't help but shiver as I stared at the eerie likeness. I continued my exploration, making my way to the second floor. The rain outside intensified, creating an eerie symphony of howling winds and drumming raindrops. It was as if the storm itself was trying to warn me to leave this place. Upstairs, I found a series of bedrooms, each more dilapidated than the last. But one room stood out, a master bedroom at the end of the hallway. The door was partially ajar and a faint light flickered from within. I cautiously pushed it open. Inside, I was met with a sight that sent a chill down my spine. The room was furnished as though someone had just stepped out for a moment. A bed with disheveled sheets, a vanity covered in old cosmetics, and a writing desk with yellowed papers. But what caught my eye was the photograph on the nightstand. It was the same woman from the portrait downstairs, the one in the white gown. She was smiling in the photograph, a stark contrast to the stories of her haunting the house. I picked up the photograph and examined it closely. There was something about her eyes, something hauntingly familiar. As I studied the photograph, I heard a sound coming from the closet, a soft, mournful sobbing. My heart raced as I approached the closet door, my flashlight trembling in my hand. I slowly opened the door, and there, huddled in the corner, was a woman in a torn and tattered white gown. She looked up at me with tear-filled eyes, and for a moment I saw a glimmer of recognition in her gaze. You came back, she whispered, her voice trembling. I was taken aback. Do I know you? I asked, my voice quivering. She nodded slowly, her expression filled with a mixture of sadness and relief. I've been waiting for you to return for so long. I helped her out of the closet, my mind racing with questions. Who was this woman and why did she seem to know me? As she spoke, the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. Her name was Emily, and she had lived in this house decades ago. She had been a recluse, rarely leaving the mansion, and she had a fascination with the rain. It was during a torrential downpour that she had disappeared, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. As Emily recounted her story, I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of unease. She spoke of a darkness that had consumed her, a darkness that had driven her to seek solace in the rain. She had become trapped in a time loop, reliving the same rainy night over and over again. I listened in horror as she described the torment she had endured, the isolation and despair that had slowly eroded her sanity. She had tried to leave the house countless times, but each time she stepped outside, she found herself back in the mansion as if the world beyond its walls no longer existed. 
It was then that I realized the truth. Willow Street was not cursed by supernatural forces, but by the darkness that had consumed Emily's soul. She had become a prisoner in her own memories, trapped in a never-ending cycle of rain and despair. Determined to help Emily, I searched the house for any clues that might break the curse. I found a journal in the study, filled with Emily's writings and musings. It was a chronicle of her descent into madness, a desperate plea for someone to free her from her eternal torment. As I read through the journal, I began to understand the key to breaking the cycle. Forgiveness. Emily had been consumed by guilt and regret, and it was only by forgiving herself for her past actions that she could find peace. I returned to Emily, who had been sitting by the window watching the rain. I gently told her what I had discovered and encouraged her to forgive herself for whatever had led her to this point. Tears welled up in her eyes as she slowly began to let go of the pain and guilt that had bound her for so long. As the rain continued to pour outside, something remarkable happened. The room seemed to brighten, and the storm outside began to subside. Emily's smile grew brighter, and for the first time in years, she felt a sense of peace. With each passing moment, the house on Willow Street transformed. The decay and darkness that had shrouded it began to fade away, replaced by a sense of warmth and hope. It was as if the very soul of the house was healing. As the rain finally ceased, Emily and I stepped outside, hand in hand. The world beyond Willow Street had changed, and Emily was finally free to explore it. We walked away from the house, leaving behind the memories of its haunting past. In the end, the scariest thing about Willow Street was not the supernatural, but the darkness that can consume a person's soul. It was a reminder that sometimes, the most terrifying horrors are the ones that exist within us, waiting to be confronted and forgiven. And as I looked back at the house one last time, I couldn't help but wonder how many other stories of darkness and redemption were hidden behind the doors of abandoned houses, waiting for someone to uncover them in the rain. The rain was relentless that night, falling in torrents from a sky shrouded in darkness. It was the kind of rain that seemed to wash away the world, erasing all sound except for the rhythmic drumming of water on rooftops and pavement. The storm had come out of nowhere, and I found myself driving along a desolate stretch of highway, desperately searching for shelter. My name is Mark, and I was on a road trip that had taken me far from civilization. I had always been drawn to remote places, the kind where you could escape the noise and chaos of the world. But on this particular night, I had ventured too far, and now I was paying the price. As I drove, my headlights cut through the sheets of rain, illuminating the dense forest on either side of the road. The trees loomed like silent sentinels, their branches dripping with water. I felt a growing sense of unease as the road stretched on endlessly, with no sign of civilization in sight. Just when I was beginning to lose hope, I spotted a faint glimmer through the trees. It was the soft glow of a single light, like a beacon in the darkness. I slowed down and turned onto a narrow winding path that led me deeper into the woods. The path ended at a small cabin nestled among the trees. It was a rustic structure, its wooden walls weathered and worn by time. A battered sign next to the cabin's entrance read, Rustic Rain Retreat. It seemed like the perfect place to seek refuge from the storm. I parked my car and made my way to the cabin's front door. The rain had soaked me to the bone, and I was shivering as I knocked on the door. It swung open slowly, revealing an elderly man with kind eyes and a welcoming smile. Come in, come in, he said, gesturing for me to enter. You must be freezing out there. I stepped inside, feeling an immediate sense of warmth and comfort. The cabin's interior was cozy, with a crackling fire in the fireplace and soft, inviting furnishings. The room was adorned with various oddities, antique clocks, vintage photographs, and an assortment of curiosities that hinted at a rich and storied past. I'm George, the man said, extending a hand. And you are? Mark, I replied, shaking his hand. I can't thank you enough for letting me in. I got caught in the storm, and I wasn't sure I'd make it out of there. George waved off my gratitude. No need to thank me. We don't get many visitors out here, especially not on a night like this. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. As the rain continued to pour outside, 
George and I sat by the fire, sipping on hot tea and sharing stories. He told me about the cabin, how it had been in his family for generations, and how he had turned it into a retreat for weary travelers like myself. There was something captivating about his tales, and I found myself hanging on his every word. As the night wore on, George offered me a spare bedroom to spend the night. I gladly accepted, grateful for the warmth and shelter. The rain showed no signs of letting up, and the thought of venturing back out into the storm was unappealing. I settled into the cozy bedroom, and as I lay in bed, the sound of rain against the cabin's roof became a soothing lullaby. I drifted off into a deep, dreamless sleep, feeling safe and secure in the heart of the forest. The following morning, I awoke to the gentle patter of rain against the window. I stretched and yawned, feeling well-rested and refreshed. As I made my way downstairs, I could smell the enticing aroma of breakfast cooking. George was in the kitchen, preparing a hearty meal of scrambled eggs, bacon, and toast. He greeted me with a smile as I entered. Good morning, Mark, he said. I hope you slept well. I did, thank you, I replied, taking a seat at the kitchen table. This place is like a hidden oasis. George chuckled. It can feel that way sometimes. Away from the noise and distractions of the world, it's easy to find peace and solitude here. Over breakfast, we talked some more. George shared more stories about the cabin's history and the generations of his family who had called it home. He told me about his late wife, Sarah, who had loved the rain more than anything. Her memory was woven into every corner of the cabin, from the vintage raincoats hanging by the door to the old records of rainy day songs on the shelf. As we chatted, I couldn't help but notice that there was something peculiar about the rain. It seemed to fall with a rhythm, almost like a pattern. I mentioned it to George, and he gave me a knowing smile. Ah, uh, you've noticed it too, he said. The rain here has a way of speaking to you if you listen closely enough. I raised an eyebrow. Speaking to me? How so? George's eyes twinkled with a hint of mischief. Well, you see... Every drop of rain has a story to tell. It carries with it the memories of those who have passed through here. It's like a chorus of whispers in the rain. I laughed, thinking he was simply indulging in a bit of poetic license. But as I continued to listen to the rain, I began to notice something strange. It was as though I could hear faint voices in the distance, like the murmur of a crowd gathered far away. Curiosity got the better of me, and I asked George about it. He nodded, as if he had been waiting for the question. The rain here has a way of bringing back memories, he explained. It's said that the whispers you hear are echoes of the past, fragments of conversations and moments frozen in time. I leaned in, intrigued by the idea. So you're saying that the rain carries the memories of everyone who's been here? George nodded. That's one way to look at it. Some say that when you listen to the rain, you can hear the stories of those who came before us. It's a reminder that we're all connected in some way by the places we've been and the people we've met. As the day wore on, I found myself captivated by the rain's symphony of whispers. It was as though I could hear snippets of conversations, laughter, and moments of joy and sorrow. It was a haunting and beautiful experience, one that made me feel more connected to the world around me. Days turned into weeks, and I found myself settling into a routine at the Rustic Rain Retreat. George and I became fast friends, and I spent my time exploring the surrounding forest and listening to the rain's whispers. Each drop of rain seemed to carry a story, and I couldn't get enough of it. One rainy afternoon, George handed me an old leather-bound journal. I thought you might find this interesting, he said. It belonged to Sarah, my late wife. She was quite the writer. I opened the journal and began to read. It was filled with Sarah's musings, observations, and reflections on life in the cabin. Her words painted a vivid picture of her love for the rain, her deep connection to nature, and her enduring love for George. As I read through the journal, I couldn't help but feel a pang of sadness. Sarah's words were filled with a sense of longing, as though she had left something unfinished. I mentioned this to George, and his expression grew somber. Yes, he said softly. Sarah loved this place more than anything, but she always felt like there was something missing. She used to say that the rain held the key to the cabin's true purpose. But she never quite figured out what that meant. I couldn't help but wonder if Sarah's words were somehow connected to the whispers in the rain. It seemed like there was a deeper mystery to unravel, one that had been hidden in plain sight all along. 
As the weeks turned into months, my bond with George deepened, and the cabin truly began to feel like a second home. But there was a growing sense of restlessness in me, a nagging feeling that I had a role to play in unraveling the mystery of the rain. One stormy night as I lay in bed listening to the rain's whispers, I had a revelation. It was as though a puzzle piece had fallen into place in my mind. I realized that the rain was trying to tell me something to reveal a truth that had remained hidden for far too long. The following morning, I approached George with my newfound insight. I think Sarah's right, I said. I think the rain does hold the key to the cabin's true purpose. George's eyes lit up with excitement. You think so? But what could it be? I explained my theory that the rain was not just a source of comfort and nostalgia, but a living record of the cabin's history. If we could decipher the whispers in the rain, we might uncover the cabin's hidden purpose and fulfill Sarah's unspoken wish. George was eager to try, and together we embarked on a journey to unravel the mystery. We spent hours listening to the rain, recording the whispers and trying to piece together the fragments of memories and stories. It was a painstaking process, but we were determined to uncover the truth. As days turned into weeks, our efforts began to bear fruit. We discovered that the rain carried memories of all those who had stayed at the cabin, their stories intermingling with the whispers of the forest. It was as though the rain had become a living tapestry, weaving together the threads of countless lives. One rainy afternoon, as we listened to the whispers, we heard a voice that was unmistakably Sarah's. She was speaking of her love for the cabin, her longing to understand its true purpose and her hope that someone would come along who could unlock its secrets. Tears welled up in George's eyes as he listened to his late wife's voice. She was right, he said. The rain was trying to tell us something all along. We continued to listen and the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place. The whispers revealed that the cabin was meant to be a place of refuge, a sanctuary for those seeking solace and connection with nature. It was a place where the stories of the past could be preserved and shared, where the rain could carry the memories of all who had passed through its doors. With each passing day, the cabin seemed to come alive with newfound purpose. We opened it to travelers from all walks of life, inviting them to listen to the rain and share their stories. The whispers in the rain became a bridge, connecting people from different backgrounds and cultures, and the cabin became a place of healing and transformation. Years went by and the rustic rain retreat flourished. People came from far and wide to experience the magic of the cabin, to listen to the rain's whispers, and to share their own stories. The cabin had become a place of connection, where strangers became friends and where the world outside seemed to fade away. George and I grew old together, watching as the cabin fulfilled its true purpose. We knew that we had unlocked a mystery that had been hidden in plain sight, and we were grateful for the chance to be a part of something greater than ourselves. On a quiet evening, as George and I sat by the fire, listening to the rain, he turned to me with a smile. I couldn't have asked for a better friend or a better companion on this journey, Mark. I nodded, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. And I couldn't have asked for a more remarkable mentor and friend, George. This place has changed my life in ways I can't even begin to describe. As the rain continued to fall outside, I couldn't help but think that sometimes the most extraordinary mysteries are hidden in the ordinary moments of life. The rustic rain retreat had taught me that even in the quietest whispers of the rain, there could be a world of stories waiting to be discovered. And as I listened to the rain's gentle whispers, I knew that I was exactly where I was meant to be. It was a stormy evening in the small town of Willowbrook. Rain lashed against the windows and thunder rumbled ominously in the distance. The townsfolk had long grown accustomed to such weather, but this night was different. This night would be forever etched in their memories as the night the rainfall murders began. My name is Detective Sarah Mitchell, and I had been assigned to Willowbrook's police department for the past five years. Despite the town's reputation for being peaceful and quiet, my job had never lacked excitement. But nothing could have prepared me for the series of gruesome murders that would soon send shockwaves through our community. It all started with a phone call late one rainy night. The dispatcher's voice crackled through the receiver. Sarah, we've got a situation. There's been a murder down on Elm Street. I groaned inwardly, already dreading the sight that awaited me. Elm Street was a quiet neighborhood 
home to many elderly residents who had lived there for decades. It was the last place you'd expect a murder to occur. As I arrived at the scene, I could see the flashing lights of police cars and the gathered crowd of curious onlookers huddled under umbrellas. Officer Mike Reynolds, a seasoned veteran, met me at the tape barrier. Sarah, you won't believe this, he said, his voice filled with disbelief. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. We ducked under the yellow crime scene tape and approached the quaint white picket fenced house. Inside, we found the lifeless body of Mrs. Edith Sullivan, an elderly widow who had lived alone for years. Her frail figure lay sprawled on the living room floor, her eyes wide open in a frozen scream. I couldn't help but shiver as I examined the gruesome scene. Mrs. Sullivan's throat had been slashed, and her small home was in disarray, as if a tornado had swept through it. But what struck me the most was the eerie message written in red across the walls. The rainfall begins. My mind raced as I tried to make sense of the cryptic message. What did it mean? Who would do such a thing and why? The rain outside continued to pour relentlessly, creating a disconcerting backdrop to the gruesome discovery. I knew this case was unlike any I had ever encountered, and it was only the beginning. In the days that followed, the rainfall murders continued to terrorize Willowbrook. Each murder was as gruesome as the last, with the victims chosen seemingly at random. The only common thread was the cryptic message scrawled across the crime scenes. The rainfall begins. The town was gripped by fear, and my team and I worked tirelessly to piece together any clues that might lead us to the killer. But the investigation seemed to be going in circles, with no clear motive or suspect in sight. One rainy evening, as I sat in my dimly lit office, my thoughts turned to the victims. They ranged in age from young to old, and there was no apparent connection between them. It was as though the killer was selecting victims at random, leaving a trail of death and despair in their wake. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was a deeper meaning behind the cryptic message. The rainfall begins had to be a clue, a key to understanding the killer's motives. But what did it signify? As I pondered the message, a call came in from Officer Reynolds. Sarah, we've got another one. This time it's the Johnsons, a couple in their 60s. My heart sank as I rushed to the scene, my mind racing with questions. What did the rainfall murders have to do with the rain itself? And why was this town being plagued by such a gruesome and relentless killer? The investigation into the rainfall murders stretched on for weeks, and our frustration grew with each passing day. The killer left no fingerprints, no witnesses, and no discernible pattern to their crimes. It was as though they were a phantom, striking with ruthless efficiency and disappearing into the rainy night. The town's fear and paranoia were palpable. Residents locked their doors and windows, and children were no longer allowed to play outside. Willowbrook had become a town under siege, and there seemed to be no end in sight. One rainy night, as I sat in my car outside the latest crime scene, I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of hopelessness. The rain was relentless, as it had been for weeks, and it felt like an omen of the darkness that had descended upon our town. I gazed out at the rainy streets, my mind a whirlwind of questions. What did the killer want? What was the significance of the rain in their twisted agenda? And how could we stop them before they struck again? My thoughts were interrupted by the sudden appearance of a figure in my rearview mirror. A hooded figure, cloaked in darkness, was approaching my car. I reached for my weapon, my heart pounding, as the figure drew nearer. But instead of attacking, the figure handed me a small envelope and disappeared into the rainy night. I watched in shock as they melted into the shadows, leaving me with the mysterious package. With trembling hands, I opened the envelope and found a single note inside. It read, Meet me at the old rainfall bridge tonight at midnight. Come alone. I knew it was a risk, but I couldn't ignore the possibility that this message was from the killer. It was a chance to finally confront the darkness that had consumed our town. As midnight approached, I drove to the old rainfall bridge, a decrepit structure that had long been abandoned. The rain was still falling, a steady downpour that seemed to intensify as I reached my destination. I parked my car and stepped out into the darkness, clutching my weapon tightly. The bridge creaked and groaned beneath my feet as I made my way to the center where a lone figure awaited me. The figure stepped into the dim light and I gasped in shock. It was Emily, a woman I had known for years, who had recently moved to Willowbrook. 
She had always been quiet and reserved, but I had never suspected her of being involved in the rainfall murders. Emily, I said, my voice trembling. What is this? Are you involved in the murders? She shook her head, her eyes filled with fear and desperation. No, Detective Mitchell, I'm not the killer. I've been trying to stop them. I was taken aback by her words. Stop them, what do you mean? Emily explained that she had moved to Willowbrook to escape a troubled past, one that had haunted her for years. She had been plagued by nightmares and visions of the rainfall murders, and she believed that the rain itself held the key to stopping the killer. It's like a curse, she said, her voice quivering. The rain speaks to me, Detective Mitchell. It shows me things, things I can't explain. I've been trying to decipher its messages and stop the killer before they strike again. I listened in disbelief as Emily described her eerie connection to the rain. She claimed that the rain had revealed to her the identity of the killer and the location of their next victim. It was a bizarre and unbelievable story, but there was something in her eyes that made me believe she was telling the truth. As we spoke, the rain continued to fall, its relentless rhythm serving as a backdrop to our conversation. Emily begged me to help her stop the killer, to put an end to the rainfall murders once and for all. With no other leads or suspects, I had no choice but to follow Emily's guidance. She led me to a secluded spot in the woods where we waited in the darkness, listening to the rain and watching for any signs of the killer's approach. Hours passed and I began to doubt the validity of Emily's claims. But just as I was about to suggest we leave, I heard a faint noise in the distance, the sound of footsteps approaching through the rain-soaked leaves. I tightened my grip on my weapon as the figure drew nearer. And then, through the darkness and rain, I saw them. The hooded figure responsible for the rainfall murders. Emily gasped in recognition, her eyes wide with fear. That's them, Detective Mitchell. That's the killer. As the figure came closer, I could see the glint of a blade in their hand, ready to strike. With a sense of urgency, I called out, Police! Drop your weapon! The killer froze, their hooded head turning to face us. And then, in a voice that sent shivers down my spine, they spoke. I am the rainfall, and I am the answer to your town's sins. The figure lunged forward, and a struggle ensued. Rain soaked us to the bone as we fought for our lives in the darkness. But in the end, it was Emily who managed to disarm the killer, using a strength and determination I had never seen in her before. We called for backup, and the killer was apprehended and taken into custody. It was a moment of relief and closure for our town, as we had finally put an end to the rainfall murders. In the days that followed, the truth behind the rainfall murders came to light. The killer's name was David Walker, a troubled man with a deep-seated hatred for the town of Willowbrook. He had chosen his victims at random, leaving cryptic messages in a twisted attempt to instill fear and chaos. But it was Emily's connection to the rain that had ultimately led us to him. She had seen his face in her visions, and the rain had guided us to his location that fateful night on the old rainfall bridge. As I sat in my office, reflecting on the events that had transpired, I couldn't help but marvel at the strange and unsettling nature of the case. It was a reminder that sometimes, the darkest mysteries can be found in the most unexpected places, and that even the rain itself can hold secrets waiting to be uncovered. The town of Willowbrook slowly began to heal from the trauma of the rainfall murders. The rain continued to fall, as it always did, but now it was a symbol of resilience and strength. A reminder that even in the face of darkness, we could find the light. And as I looked out at the rainy streets of Willowbrook, I couldn't help but wonder what other secrets the rain might hold, and what mysteries it might reveal in the future.